Hi, this is Sam Botstein from MachineSkills.com. Check us out at MachineSkills.com for all our tutorials, courses, and sounds, and be sure to subscribe to us on YouTube so you don't miss any tutorials. Today I wanted to talk a little bit more about polyrhythm and machine. In some previous tutorials, I've talked about how to use the grids and the note repeat feature to add some hemiola, or 3 against 2 rhythm, to your performances and productions. However, I'd like to show how to use some odd type signatures in order to move past just 3 against 2. If you'll notice in the available grids and note repeat values, there are really only, you know, divisions of 2, 1 half, 1 fourth, 1 eighth, and so on, and the triplet variations of these divisions. So how is it that we can get a 5 against 4 rhythm, for example, or, you know, really anything other than 3 against 2 or just regular duple two rhythms. Well, what machine does allow us to do is to change the time signatures. I'm sure a lot of producers have never touched the time signature function or even thought about it. You know, if you're making any kind of hip-hop or house or whatever, it's very typical to leave these in 4-4. But it's possible to get the four rhythms that we're looking for while using odd time signatures in order to get these polyrhythms really clean. Now, before we do this, I did want to mention that there is one way to get nice polyrhythms of machine without doing this, which is to play them in perfectly. That's really the only option. Uh, there's not a good way to quantize, for example, or to step sequence polyrhythms without changing the time signature because of those limitations I mentioned. However, machine will let us change this denominator to be 1, 2, 4, 8, or 16 and it'll let us choose any integer between 1 through 16 for the numerator. So we could just go ahead and change this to 16. 16 over 16 is just 4 over 4 anyway, but we can bring this down to 5 uh, to get some nice 5 against 4 polyrhythms. Now, um, it's not going to make a difference for what I'm going to demonstrate, whether this is an 8 or a 16 or a 4 even. Uh, in fact, you see we get all the same places to put notes in the grid here regardless of what I choose, but I think it might be easier to see for you guys if I leave it at 16, just so we get all these numbers in the top bar here. So right away, we'll see that uh, machine adjusts the length of the scene and the length of the pattern to uh, preserve that original 4-4 length we had before. And you'll see the pattern length is, you know, three bars and, you know, a fraction. So what we're going to do in order to get this 5 against 4 feel is we're going to leave it at 5 over 16 and make the pattern length an even 4. This way, we can click in a couple of kicks and a clap and get the 4 rhythm that we're all used to. I'm just using the default 808 kit in Machine, so it's easy to follow along and replicate this at home. So here's what this sounds like. So already we've got the four by the floor kind of kick drum going and a kick snare pattern happening. But right now we're gonna be able to do some hi-hat patterns that are not possible to do in 4-4. It really requires a five rhythm. So if we um, put this in, you know, it already is starting to sound like a new thing that we've not heard before in our productions if we've always been stuck using 4-4. Four, four. So I'm going to duplicate this rhythm, maybe change it up a little bit on the third bar. And uh, here's what this sounds like. Now, uh, I think that's maybe a little bit too busy for what I'm demonstrating. So here we already have our five feel against our four feel. Um, and you'll notice that because this doesn't require on any swing or groove settings, this will work just as well at many different tempos. So if we bring up the tempo to, you know, something quite a bit faster, you know, we get all these intricate hi-hat patterns that are much faster than we're used to and would be very difficult to do on the actual original 808 hardware. Likewise, if we bring it down to, you know, maybe a more typical hip-hop tempo, um, it has a really nice kind of groove to it because it's a very different feel than any, you know, quadruple or 4-4 four, four feel.
Now, if we really wanted to take this to the next level, we could have a consistent for happening uh, in parallel to the longer for we have going and the fives that we have going at all times. So I would recommend using something like the repeating cowbell that we're hearing here. So if we uh, don't adjust anything on the cowbell, we just put it on the four, it's gonna sound like this. So that's a really interesting rhythm, but this beat delay um, is, real, is really set to something that is supposed to complement a, or really um, offset a 4-4 four, four pattern. So this 316, I'm gonna bring it down to just a 216, and we'll hear a more interesting rhythm happen. I'm gonna turn down the feedback so it doesn't last quite so long. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to use the clave sound to um, build in another four against five feel. So this is really easy to do on the machine's pads, actually. If you just hop into step mode and set it to 16ths, uh, it'll have a nice visual break. And uh, if you just put um, the notes on the first of the four pads on each line, you'll get the same effect that I'm getting here. Um, interestingly, the way that this works is if you need to do five against four, the fours come on the one, and then the five, and then the four, and then the three, and then the two. So um, that looks like this. And here's what that sounds like now. So this is a very different kind of groove than um, some of the more standard 808 grooves that we've heard before. If I ratchet up the tempo again to you know a what would be a typical house tempo in 4/4, we'll um, hear again just how different this really is. Now I really like using fives because it allows us to get these nice groups here. We could even go a little farther with another sound available in this 808 kit and add a shaker. So here we're just going to have um, an alternating kind of two feel which will um, go nice with this clave. And when we mute the clave, we'll have something to back it up. So here's what this sounds like now. So without the clave, it sounds like this. If we take out the hats, you'll be able to hear this a little more clearly. This is a really um, nice offset feel. Um, you know, it's right on the downbeat at the beginning, and it comes back around, but almost the entire pattern, you know, it's, it's going to be off and create a lot of tension and a lot of release when we get back to the downbeat. Now, um, this is all just in five against four. We actually can go to even more complicated tempos. Here, I've gone to seven against four. Now, um, what I've done here is a super simple pattern with just a kick snare like we've heard before. And I have these hi-hats coming in at um, very steadily increasing velocities so we get this nice build up to the snare. This could be really powerful for, you know, let's say like a dubstep production, you know, something where it's a kind of a halftime feel and maybe uh, kind of sparse in the percussion. This uh, nice lead into the snare is a really good way to get heads nodding, I feel. Once again, because there's no groove applied here, although um, that is an option for us, and we also have the option to quantize things that we play in now that we have the time signature set up like this. This is gonna sound really good at uh, faster tempos. So to get to a kind of a house tempo like we had before, because we have a odd time signature here, we're gonna have to go quite fast. So, uh, with just the kick in the snare, you'll hear that we're at a more typical house tempo now. But with these now ultra-fast hi-hats, 
This is again something that would be near impossible to do with the original 808 hardware, but is easy enough to do in machine, it's just a couple of clicks. This is a technique that can really, really add things to productions. So once again, I have the clave and the shaker going here. So if we hear those, now um, this is going to be seven against four, not five against four. It's another very different feel. I'm going to bring this down so it's not so busy sounding. Maybe the clave pattern doesn't work quite so well here as it did in the five against four, but our shaker pattern will work a little bit better. What I think works really nicely here is that in the first and third bars, we have our shaker going on every odd beat, but in the second and fourth bars, it's happening on every even beat. So if you take a look once again, this gives a really cool interaction between the you know, the uh, long phrase, the kick, snare, kick, snare, uh, as well as the closed hi-hats, which are sort of a solid seven feel. And unlike the clave, this won't um, disrupt everything when we ratchet up the tempo. Now, um, seven against four is all good and interesting, but we actually have the ability to ratchet this up all the way to 16. So let's take a look at what it might sound like with a 13 against two pattern. Here is a 13 against two pattern. Once again, machine lets us take this numerator all the way up to 16. I wish it would go just a little bit further to 17 or you know other really cool prime numbers, but uh, 13 is actually a lot to work with. Once again, one really nice thing that's possible to do in odd time signatures is to have a pattern be offset every other bar. So here, the hi-hats are on every even beat, and on the second and fourth bars, they'll be on every odd beat. Here's what this sounds like. So uh, this pattern is in fact quite simple, and although it's in an odd time signature and a high numerator, you know, 13, it's actually quite easy to follow. You get these nice internal little phrases, and the long phrase is uh, quite easy to follow as well. And because we're using no groove effects or swing, it'll sound good at higher tempos, like let's say the classic 128. Using odd time signatures in this way for polyrhythms opens up a whole new world and machine. I'd be really interested to hear how people use this technique. Uh, please leave your comments below, and I'd love to hear any productions that take advantage of this feature of machine. Make sure to subscribe to us on YouTube for all our machine tutorials, and check us out at machineskills.com.